When you crop or zoom into a video, you expect to see the fuzzies. That's an instant loss in video quality. How would you like to be able to crop and see more detail in a scene without that loss in quality? Well, stick around, I'll show you. This video was suggested by one of my most loyal subscribers, John Cogdor, who also gave me the suggestion from his workflow to use the Ken Burns effect to get a nice smooth zoom into the detailed part of your video. Thanks, John. Much appreciated. And if you've got any topics that you'd like covered, let me know in the comments below. I'm Bruce McBride, and I can provide Final Cut training over the internet. Just click the link training finalcutpro.com. Now let's get right into it. The secret to retaining quality is to film at a higher resolution than the resolution that you set for Final Cut in your project. Have you tried this approach? Let me know in the comments below how you found it. In this video, I'll show you the correct way to retain that highest quality, and in the process, I'll show you lots of little shortcuts that you may not know. Oh, and by the way, cropping is known by Final Cut as reframing. And it's most common to use 4K as your filming resolution and set your timeline to a 1080p timeline. That's 1920 by 1080. Though any higher filming rate will work anyway. When you film at 4K, you'll have a pixel count of 3840 by 2160 or something similar depending on your 4K camera. For instance, if you're filming in 4K on an iPhone, that will be your pixel count. But if you film with a professional camera, it could be higher. For instance, a Sony FS6 can film at 4K at 4096 by 2160, or even higher if you're screen recording. For this video, I'll work with 4K at 3840 by 2160 in a 1080p, that's 920 by 1080 project. Let me explain the principle of the reframing exercise. If your project is 1920 by 1080 and you've filmed at 4K, then you can afford to zoom in or crop to around 50% of the project's resolution and not lose any quality. Plus, if you don't reframe, then you'll still have a better image than you would have done if you'd shot at 1080p. Because if you downscale from 4K to 1080p, that's full HD, then your image is oversampled four times and you have all that extra pixel resolution. You'll find the picture is a lot sharper, there'll be more color, it'll be more vivid, and you'll have less video noise. Have a look at these shapes here. You could crop or zoom in the blue rectangle to fill the full red rectangle without losing quality. Or to make it more dramatic, if we put an image in the blue and enlarge that, look what happens. So how do you set this up? It's simple. The first thing is to film your footage at 4K and then import it into Final Cut as per normal. Then create a new project. Set the format to 1080p. Make sure the resolution is set to 1920 by 1080 at the same frame rate as your camera filmed at. Now drag the 4K clip into the timeline and you can reframe at no more than 50%. There's no loss in quality. It's simple and as easy as that. Now let's look at some practical examples. Reframing has two main uses. First, for face-to-camera type videos, where bloopers have to be cut out, and then subsequently there's a jump cut left behind. And this can be hidden by a reframe or a change in angle, but for it to work, it needs to be about a 30% difference in size. And the second is to give an effect that you film with more than one camera. By reframing to zoom into points of interest, and then return to the wide angle. Let's look at the face to camera first. And this is a demo. I'm recording this as part of the reframing tutorial. And this next section is unwanted, so I'm going to cut it out in post. But the problem with cutting that out is that there's going to be a jump cut. 
Now that recording is in the timeline, I'll cut out the unwanted section. And this is a demo. I'm recording this as part of the reframing tutorial. And this next section is unwanted, so I'm going to cut it out in post. But the problem with cutting that out is that there's going to be a jump cut. Now let's play that back with the section cut out as part of the reframing tutorial. Notice the jump cut. I'll play past it again. Reframing tutorial. But now while still in post, I'll reframe the segment after that cut and the change in angle hides the jump cut. I'll play around the reframe section again. And to do that, I've used a couple of little known commands called play around and play selection. Let's use play around first. Click in the middle of the segment that you want to play around. Select play around in the view menu under playback. The shortcut is shift plus question mark. To explain what happens, when you press the shortcut key, the playhead moves to a predefined position to the left of the selection. It plays through the selection to a predefined point and then snaps back to where you made the selection. And you can use the shortcut to play around multiple times. A short pre-selected area is selected for you though. The second hidden command is play selection. And this will play around a range that you have control over the length of the playback, not just a pre-selected area as in the play around option. So to do this, select the range tool. The shortcut is the R key. Drag a range around the area you want to loop. In the view menu under playback, select play selection. The shortcut is forward slash. Let's look at the second reason to reframe, where we give the impression of filming with several cameras. Find the point in your timeline where you want to zoom into a particular subject and blade out that portion. In this case, I want to hide the photographer from the scene. Hold the B key. The cursor will temporarily change into a blade. Make two cuts, and when you release the B, the cursor will snap back to the select tool. That's the A tool. Now resize the cut segment with the transform tool. Always use the corner blue dots. The other dots will change the shape. That's the aspect ratio of the clip. I'll command Z that to undo. Using the corner dots, you will see all sides are moved. You can reposition the clip to show the subject matter that you want to feature. I'll undo that as well now. I want to do the same thing, but this time hold the Option key while resizing the corner dot. And you'll notice that it resizes only from the selected corner. The other corner stays in place. I feel this gives a bit more control. Now for a nice extra slow zoom in effect using the Ken Burns. Blade another segment in the timeline. Hold the B key, the cursor will temporarily change into a blade. Make two cuts. Select that segment, make sure the yellow lines are around it. Right click in the viewer window and select crop. Select Ken Burns and zoom into the subject matter with the red end frame as the zoomed in portion. Now let's play that selection with a range as we did before. Press the R key. Drag the range, press forward slash, press forward slash to play again. And finally to export. When you export the project, it will be exported at 1920 by 1080, that's full HD. Let me know in the comments below if there are any areas that you're struggling with in Final Cut. I'll be very happy to make a tutorial to cover those issues for you. Thanks for watching. Please like subscribe and press the bell. There are new videos every Sunday.